Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Dr. Gillard here. I wanted to do an unscheduled video here because I got so upset when I read this paper right here. And it was published in the number one spine journal in the world, or maybe used to be number one spine journal in the world, and that's the journal Spine. And just for some background, so I love reading spine research. I had a failed discectomy back in the day, which has limited my, my function, and I'm fascinated to to follow along with the research and see if there's not only a fix for me, but a fix for other people who have had failed surgery or on the fence, maybe having surgery or not. So I try to stay abreast of the research the best I can. And I like to only read the research from very high impact journals like Spine or the Spine Journal or European Spine, to name a few of them. They all have impact factors of over two. So that's, um, that's good. But I stumbled on this article here. It's a 2023 article in Spine that was published by Galetta. I think that's how you say his name. And the title caught my attention because adjacent segment disease, uh, that is a problem with inner body fusion, right? It's a well-known problem. If you have L4 and 5 fused together, it throws off the biomechanics of the spine. It puts extra stress on the discs and facet joints above and below the fusion. And they have a tendency to blow out anywhere from 1% chance to 5% chance. And it's a problem. They tried to make artificial discs to fix that problem and it didn't help. So anything with adjacent segment disease really catches my eye. And then this paper, they compared the open traditional surgical approach to do transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion, one of my favorite types of fusion, uh, versus a minimally invasive technique to do the same thing. And I'm not a fan of that. I don't like my surgeons working through little tiny holes like this to try to do a fusion construct. I'd rather have the tissue pulled apart where the surgeon has full field of view and can see what he or she is doing. So I've never been a fan of them. And when I zip down here and looked at the results or the conclusions, it says open T-lift was found to have statistically significant higher rates of reoperation due to adjacent segment disease compared to the minimally invasive approaches. And I'm like, what? I've never heard of that before. And this is spine, right? This is a very high respected journal. And then I looked up at the results and I saw at three years, there was a 23.2% failure rate. So they had to do a revision surgery in 23% and eight in the open group versus only 8% in the minimally invasive group. I just didn't believe that. I don't buy it. I'm a professor of anatomy and physiology. I work with cadavers. I know biomechanics really well. I don't get it. How could that possibly be? Especially since other papers like this didn't find that. And But this was spine, so I was really intrigued. So I had to find out more. I actually downloaded the whole paper and read it. And I was I was appalled by what I found. Literally appalled. Because nowhere in this abstract, and this is what you guys get for free, right, from PubMed. This is what you guys can see. And I can show you this because this part is not copyright protected because it's, I mean, it's free for everybody to view. But I can't show you the actual paper. But I did review this at mychirogeek.com, and I can certainly show you my review of the paper. So let's jump over to chirogeek.com, and let's go to other... And let's go to spine research, and you'll see it's the top one. So here's the paper I reviewed, and I was clearly quite upset by it. And that's pretty much everything I said here. Uh, but what shocked me so much? Well, it was very sloppily written. There were some gross errors in it that the editor should have caught, for one thing. But the big thing is in number two here. So it involves the loss of follow-up rate, or loss to follow-up rate. What does that mean? That means how many patients did not show up for that three-year examination, so they were lost to the study. And traditionally, you never want more than a 20% loss rate. In fact, as I understand it, your spine won't accept anything with a greater than 20% loss rate. I, I'm a published author in spine, and I know that. I've, I've submitted a lot of papers to them and been rejected, uh, and I know it's a 20% threshold. 
And surprisingly, 50% of the cohort or the group being studied was lost. The researchers had absolutely no idea what happened to them. Did some of them die? Did some of them get revision? Did they all do great and didn't want to come in? We don't know the answers to that. So statistically speaking, this study is garbage, in my opinion, and should have never been published in Spine. It's absolutely worthless, and I just don't understand how the editors let this one in because, in my opinion, it really degrades that magazine and makes me not trust them anymore. I'll never read an abstract from them again without looking at the paper. I usually don't anyway before I really incorporate something into my algorithm. But yeah, I was really upset by this, as you can see here. So the lesson here is this. When you cruise through PubMed, and you guys know PubMed, right? You just type in P-U-B-M-E-D and pull up the first Google thing, and there it is. It's a .gov, and you can type anything you want in here. Microdiscectomy, uh, fusion, transfemoral lumbar intervital diffusion, anterior lumbar intervital diffusion, X-lift. Type it in there, and it'll pull up the latest research. Now, it usually just gives you abstracts, but the point of this video is don't trust the abstract uh, because, as we could see here in Spine, it was totally misleading. I mean, some people might have read this paper, just the abstract, and they were on the fence as to whether to have a, a minimally invasive T-lift versus an open T-lift. They read this abstract and they thought, oh my God, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to have the minimally invasive one when this is absolutely garbage. And this influenced their decision based on garbage. So really upset with this, guys. Uh, and I've already written a letter to the editor of Spine. I'll let you know if they respond, which they probably won't. Uh, but yeah, this, can't, this kind of stuff just can't happen. If you're going to publish a paper with only 50% of the cohort checking in, then you have to disclaim that somewhere on the results. And it's clearly gone from these results. No mention of it. All right, guys, that's my rant for today. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below. Remember, if you are interested in consulting with me, I do offer a consultation service. I call it a coaching session. I'll leave a link down below, and you can learn all about it if you're interested. All right, see you in the next video.